assuming people can hear me. Um, good morning. Uh, welcome to uh, this morning's virtual meeting of the New York Metropolitan Transportation Council. Uh, my name is Ron Epstein, and I serve as secretary to the council. Um, and today's meeting um, is today today held virtual. Uh, we are doing it virtually um, for a number of reasons, including um, you know, uh, ensuring the health and safety of our members, staff, and other uh, participants in the uh, activities of NIMTIC. Um, we are uh, allowed to do so pursuant to recent uh, statute that was signed by Governor Hochul. Um, for the meeting, um, you know, today, uh, we hope that uh, you will remain muted until uh, you are speaking uh, so that we don't have any, um, you know, background noise or otherwise uh, inability to hear uh, presentations or discussion by uh, principals. The uh, chat pod is available for your use and it is being monitored by staff. So if you have any comments, uh, please do type those into the chat pod um, and uh, they will be reviewed and uh, included in the meeting synopsis. Um, during the uh, public participation section of the agenda, uh, we have asked individuals to pre-register uh, and we will uh, call on registered speakers one at a time uh, and we will uh, open their lines so that they can uh, present their statements. Uh, this is a web meeting. Uh, it is being recorded uh, and the um, final version will be posted on the website within two weeks of today's um, event. So at this time, what I'd like to do is uh, commence the roll call. I will announce um, your agency and I ask that uh, one principal uh, or representative of your uh, specific agency um, acknowledge uh, your presence. Um, obviously, I will start with the New York State Department of Transportation, uh, Commissioner Dominguez. Good morning, present. Um, Mr. Can you say that again? I think we're having a problem hearing you. Good morning. I'm okay. present. Um, Mr. Gutman. Uh, good morning. I'm present. New York City Department of Planning. Good morning, Jack Schmidt, representing director of the department and city planning commission chair, Marisa Lago. I'm sorry, I, the New York City Department of Planning? Yes, Jack Schmidt, representing city planning commission chair, Marisa Lago. Can anybody hear me? Yes, yes. Hello? You're good, Ron. Good, Ron. Sorry about that. Yes. Um, that's okay. And I want and to the video. Nassau County. Good morning. Good morning, Sally. 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 Representative, Representative County County Executive Florida Current. Good morning. Good morning, County Executive. County Executive. Ron, we can't, we can't. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to move out Rockland County. Can you hear me? County, county, county. Yes, yes. Sorry. Stephen, Stephen Powers, Powers. Powers. representing county, county executive that day. Thank you. Putnam County. Sandra Hessel. Hi, Sandra. Uh, it sounds like somebody might be on both the video and the audio. There's a little bit of echo. Um, Westchester County. Naomi, Naomi representing executive, executive Adamer. Adamer. Hi, Naomi. Uh, MTA? Mike Schiffer, Mike Schiffer with, MTA, with MTA. And I believe and Stephanie, Stephanie Delisle is on and, and she'll be the voting, she'll be the voting member. member. Great. Good morning, Mike and Stephanie. Um, Federal Transit Administration, I think I heard uh, Steve. Uh, Steve Goodman, uh, Steve Goodman uh, Federal Highway Administration? New Jersey Transit. Good morning. This Good morning. Is this is the representing president. Good morning. Uh, NJTPA. 
Hello, this Hello, is David, David Barron, Barron, Barron presenting, presenting the TPA executive director of the EMEA. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is Rick Rojo, Air Director, Air Director of the CPA Region 2, presenting, presenting acting, acting regional administration. Morning. Port Authority. Good morning. Good morning. This is Sheffield, representing Executive Director Rick Cotton. And um, DEC, New York State DEC. Uh, Jared, uh, Snyder Jared Snyder for Commissioner for... Basil Sagos. On my count, we do have a quorum. I uh, do apologize for the audio and technical difficulties we're having this morning. Uh, it is my pleasure now to turn the meeting over to NIMPIC's co-chair and New York State Department of Transportation Commissioner, Marie Therese Dominguez. Good morning, Commissioner. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, before I begin today's program, I'd like to take a moment to do a little bit of reflection. Um, certainly within the last week, we've had uh, catastrophic flooding uh, from Hurricane Ida. We've actually been hit by three uh, separate tropical storms in the state of New York, um, all within a four week time span. And last week's um, came with significant loss of life. Um, the really the record amount of rainfall and tornadoes that uh, that caused such significant damage and destruction and loss of life in the tri state area was really quite remarkable. Um, and the extreme weather also knocked out power. Um, it really affected our water and our sewer systems and as well as significantly impacting our transportation network. But this was not an isolated incident. It's not an isolated event. In fact, um, it's really just the latest in a series, as I noted, of extreme weather events that we're experiencing across the region, um, across the state, across the nation. Uh, as I said before, three significant extreme weather events in uh, the New York City region alone uh, in the last four weeks. Um, and it certainly illustrates the need for this council to have uh, an engaged uh, and aggressive posture uh, as we look to mitigate the impacts of climate change on our transp transportation system writ large. We really need to do all we can do uh, to quickly uh, address um, so many of the impacts that we're seeing. Um, the federal government has been uh, excellent partners in stepping in and helping us. They started, uh, you know, long ago uh, with the beginning, uh, the beginning of this year with the uh, pending federal infrastructure investment and jobs act that's now uh, before the Congress, uh, which really for the first time in our nation's history prioritizes investments in resilience and carbon emission reductions which really is uh, an incredible step forward here. Um, but as we look at what the extreme weather has brought us, we also have to acknowledge that as New Yorkers, um, we need to uh, recognize that uh, we are upon a very significant anniversary. And that is that this Saturday marks the 20th anniversary of a series of um, attacks that occurred upon our country, upon the United States when uh, we had um, the missions that were the suicide missions that were uh, the result of 9-11. Uh, Two of those planes were actually flown directly into the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center, which at that time was home to NIMTIC. And uh, I want to make sure uh, that we never forget and always honor the lives uh, of those lost um, those lives of our beloved Nimtic family members, uh, Ignatius uh, Adog, Agnagda, Charles Lesperance, and Si Wong Shum uh, were all, all perished that day. Um, and we will never forget them. So if we could for a moment, I'd like to take a brief moment, pause and uh, take a moment of silence as we remember and honor their lives, their contributions and the lives of so many that were lost on that day. Thank you all very, very much. Um, we'll never forget their, their, uh, 
their true public service. Uh, and today, uh, let's turn to today's agenda. We've got a, a robust agenda in front of us. Um, I'd like to welcome you all to today's meeting of, of NIMTIC, uh, our New York Metropolitan Transportation Council. Uh, we'll be adopting, in terms of agenda items, the, uh, the key elements here that we're going to be looking at is first and foremost adopting the council's next regional transportation plan, which is entitled moving forward. Um, we are also very honored today to have with us a good friend and a strong partner as our keynote speaker. Uh, and that is federal transit administrator, Nuria Fernandez. We're very pleased that Nuria uh, has been able to join us today. She is certainly no stranger to the greater New York metropolitan area where she served as the chief operating officer at the MTA. Uh, I personally know her uh, for many years of service together uh, in transportation. She has an unparalleled uh, amount of experience, leadership, knowledge uh, in transportation across the board and her ability to collaborate with all levels of government uh, is one of the hallmark um, points of her leadership. She really is the best of the best and we're really glad that she could join us. So Nuria, thank you. Uh, it's an honor to have you with us and we look forward to your remarks. I'd also like to thank my co-chair, uh, Suffolk County Steve, uh, Suffolk County Executive Steve DeLong. Steve has demonstrated great leadership and dedication during his tenure as NIM NIMTIC's co-chair, and uh, we're really glad to have him. His commitment to regional issues, especially those that uh, focus on enhancing safety and mobility for all us users of transportation and for all ages and abilities is truly noteworthy. And on behalf of the council, I would also like to personally extend my appreciation to the NIMTIC staff for their contributions to the development of NIMTIC's next regional transportation plan. It really is quite an undertaking and we very much appreciate uh, their efforts. That regional transportation plan, as I noted, is called Moving Forward and it really does capture the framework that NIMTIC uh, has put forth in terms of its principles for developing a shared vision for regional mobility. This shared vision states that the council members aspire to do the following. One, ensure that the mobility provided by our transportation systems reaches everyone in a sustainable, healthy, and equitable manner. That we invest efficiently in meeting the region's transportation, need, transportation needs, and that we respond effectively to the transportation's challenges of tomorrow. As we continue to move through uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, our focus has been on the immediate. What is happening now? And looking at what may happen next year, what will happen over the course of the next few years. Although this is our current focus, uh, we can't lose sight of, the, of the, the much longer term view that we really do in transportation. And that is truly maintaining, investing in, and enhancing the transportation system uh, to meet the challenges of growth and change that is so critically important to all of us. We all know that these are long-term investments that we make. Uh, they are great assets that we uh, foster and facilitate in the multi-state metropolitan region that NIMTIC uh, really plans for is critical to, uh, to all of this. Um, it really is one of the oldest, most complex and highly used transportation networks in the entire world, the, the region that we service here in, in New York. So transportation investments truly are key to the New York metropolitan area's economic competitiveness and the long-term sustainability of our, of not only our state, uh, but our entire region. And collectively as, uh, as a NIMTIC council and individually as member agencies are advancing their critical measures to sustain and reimagine the transportation system, we really need to look at that level of resiliency and how we can reduce the contributions that we know transportation um, is a part of in terms of uh, our climate change. Transportation is one of those areas that is not only incredibly uh, important and necessary, but there's means that we can focus on to reducing greenhouse gas emissions. So the members of this council are creating opportunities to move the region forward. And I really wanna thank all of them for your continued support and your involvement and having a much longer term view of everything that we engage in. Together, we are truly all moving forward. Uh, and with that, uh, I will 
Uh, I would like to introduce uh, my co chair, our co chair for the uh, for the council here, Suffolk County Executive Steve Below. Steve. Commissioner, how are you? Thank you uh, very much for um, your words and particularly for your leadership. Um, these have been some challenging times for sure for all of us. And uh, I think all of us, uh, all the members of the council uh, really appreciate uh, everything that you and your team uh, have done. And, and I especially appreciate uh, your comments regarding the uh, terrible storm and extreme weather events that we've seen, particularly uh, this last one that caused so much devastation and loss of life for our heartbreaks for all those uh, families who who uh, lost loved ones and, and all of those who've been impacted. And certainly as we approach now the 20th anniversary of the September 11th, 2001 attack uh, on our nation, on our city, on our state, um, we're thinking about uh, all of those uh, friends and neighbors uh, and and all those who lost loved ones on that terrible day um, and also those who rushed to the scene to try to rescue people and to recover those who were lost. Uh, we are thinking about them today and, and particularly uh, on the upcoming 20th anniversary. So thank you, uh, Commissioner. Uh, and thank you to all of my colleagues uh, who are on this uh, call on the meeting today uh, for all of your work. It's been a uh, privilege to be able to work with you uh, throughout the COVID pandemic um, and the challenges that we faced together. Uh, and I also want to thank the NIMTIC staff uh, as well for uh, your partnership and outstanding work uh, that you do uh, for all of us uh, in the region. Uh, so thank you everybody uh, who is joining for this video conference. I really appreciate. Um, you know, we begin as we begin to emerge now from the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we we have to continue to do everything we can to modernize our transit system, while also incorporating the lessons we've learned over these past 18 months or so. When the rest of the world stood still, our transit systems kept running and were absolutely critical to transporting our frontline heroes. But even as we take steps toward a full recovery of our economy, our transit systems are still trying to rebound. As expected, bus ridership in Suffolk County was greatly affected by COVID-19. Ridership dropped to a low of 30% of the previous year's levels during the height of the pandemic in the spring of 2020. Fixed route ridership has rebounded to approximately 60% of 2019's ridership and paratransit ridership is now at 70% of 2019's ridership. But we are still a ways off. But let's face it, the world we live in today looks much different than two years ago. And we need innovative solutions to move our transit network forward. The typical rush hours may never look the same. COVID-19 has forever changed uh, the normal nine to five job. With a shift to remote work and added flexibility into one schedule, how do we plan for the future and what's next? In Suffolk, we're working on a number of initiatives to build out a 21st century transportation network. And while we're working on some of our largest transit initiatives prior to COVID-19, they've become ever more critical now. Our reimagined transit initiative, which is designed to rethink our entire network of Suffolk County transit bus routes to ensure that the county is making the best use of its resources and aligning its investments with community goals and priorities. That is well underway and expected to be completed by the end of the year and will result in an implementation and rollout plan to redesign Suffolk's transit network. The goal of the initiative is to restructure transit services to offer a more effective transit system that is in tune with the emerging technologies and trends and identify opportunities for the use of new tools like on-demand transit services. We also launched a first of its kind mobility service for Suffolk County that will expand access to public transit. The service, which launched on June 16, provides a new on-demand public transit option, Suffolk Transit On Demand. This complements and extends the county's existing transit system and provides transit coverage around Southampton and Sag Harbor in an area formerly served by the Suffolk Transit 10A bus route. 
This first of its kind service uses advanced algorithms to create quick and efficient trips in real time, increasing efficiency and reliability for riders. This new service not only helps create that first and last mile connection, it also furthers our continued efforts to connect Long Island by utilizing 21st century transportation technologies. The goals of this pilot are to provide better transit service to Southampton residents and to understand how ride sharing services can potentially be integrated into the county's transit network. The Route 110 bus rapid transit system will be a high frequency premium transit service, which will provide north south mobility, promote increased transit use, and improve quality of life. The county is currently completing 30% project development and anticipated moving into final design in 2022 for this bus rapid transit system. And plans currently call for 21 bus rapid transit stations between Amityville and Huntington with traffic signal priority, queue jumps, and exclusive shoulder running bus lanes at key points along the corridor. As you're all aware, New York State has identified Suffolk County as one of five transit systems statewide that will transition 25% of its fleet to electric by 2025 and 100% of its fleet by 2035. This is a bold mission, but one that we believe is certainly achievable. Suffolk County has now received 1.6 million in FTA grant funds to purchase new battery electric buses and charging equipment, making us one of only two entities in New York State to receive such funding. And the county is currently working with local energy provider PSEG to upgrade power at two of the county's six bus depots, and also working with a consultant provided by NIPA on a countywide bus fleet electrification master plan. The county is poised to begin with pilot programs of 10 buses, which are expected to begin service in 2022. And finally, one of the projects that we're working on, incredibly excited about, is creating a interconnected countywide hike bike network. With funding from NIMTIC, Suffolk County completed its first ever comprehensive hike and bike master plan in March 2020. This master plan proposes an astounding roughly 1,200 miles of pedestrian and bicycle infrastructure, including shared use paths, bike lanes, and foot trails. These new facilities will connect parks, historic sites, transit centers, and downtowns throughout the county and build on our countywide bike share program which is called Beth Page Ride. Additional funding from NIMTIC is allowing us to advance seven priority projects across Suffolk County into conceptual design. We're also beginning preliminary design for one project to fill a one mile infrastructure gap between the 3.5 mile Tatawkic Greenway and the 13 mile North Shore Rail Trail, creating a link from Setauket to Wading River. What's important to note is that these are not isolated advancements, but a part of the county's commitment to embracing change and opportunity. And I want to thank the members for their support for these crucial Suffolk County initiatives, especially our countywide hike, bike, and mobility plans. People love biking. We know that. They love the outdoors. They want to be active and not be combined only to an automobile to get from point A to point B. As we enter a post-COVID-19 world, innovation and thinking big is the only way we grow our economy and maximize the limited resources available that leverage the investment required to get the job done. This is an exciting moment in history here in Suffolk County, and I am optimistic for what the future brings. Thank you again, uh, everybody, uh, and I'd like now to turn the meeting back to Commissioner Dominguez. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you so much, County Executive Galone. Um, at this point in time, uh, what I'd like to do is hear from, uh, turn it over to our keynote speaker um, and introduce our very special guest. Uh, let me introduce Mr. Steve Goodman, who serves as FTA's regional administrator for New York. Uh, Steve is a, a great partner for all of us across the board. And Steve, we'll turn it over to you to introduce the administrator for New York. Well, good morning and, and thank you for that kind introduction, uh, uh, Commissioner Dominguez. Uh, and thank you and uh, uh, Suffolk County Executive alone uh, for inviting 
uh, FDA to speak with him today. Um, it is my pleasure to introduce FDA Administrator Maria Fernandez. With more than 35 years in transportation in the transportation industry, Administrator Fernandez is an experienced and inspiring leader. She comes to our agency after serving as the general manager and CEO of the Santa Clara Valley Transportation Authority for the past seven years, as well as the chair of the American Public Transportation Association. And we're lucky to have her leading FDA. Administrator Noria Fernandez will discuss the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act and how the success of NIMFIX transportation systems are critical to the economic health and sustainable future growth of the region. Now, let me turn it over to you, Noria. Thank you very much, uh, Steve. I think we're going to have to turn off some of the mics. I'm getting feedback. But it's really good to see all of you. Good morning. Uh, and thank you, Commissioner Dominguez and the Suffolk County Executive Ballone uh, for extending this invitation. I want to join you in your reflection of the anniversary of September 11, the 20th anniversary of September 11, and, and let you know that our hearts and our thoughts are with you and the New York region. On behalf of Secretary Pete Buttigieg and the Biden-Harris administration, I really appreciate this opportunity. I also want to recognize uh, FTA Region 2 uh, Administrator Steve Goodman, who introduced me today, and his great team who lead our federal transit program in your region. So as you know, this is truly a pivotal time for our nation's public transportation systems. Uh, last month, the Senate passed the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. That legislation includes $550 billion in new federal uh, investment in America's infrastructure. And the transit industry is gonna receive almost 90 billion in guaranteed funding. And that is most significant federal support for transit in our nation's history. Uh, that proposed funding is not just an abstract number. It's gonna improve people's lives throughout our nation, including the New York Metro region. Uh, the Department of Transportation and FTA are focused on providing support for the kind of regional transportation planning and well thought out transit projects and initiatives that we're seeing you coordinate in New York City, the Lower Hudson Valley and Long Island. And we hope the infrastructure bill will soon provide a new source of funding to speed up transit expansion and also help improve the state of good repair for transit agencies in your region helping provide the type of foundation for continued sustainable growth. We're also happy that Congress did as much as possible to look after transit uh, in the CARES, the CRISA, and the ARP legislation. Of course, that has posed a bit of an issue here in the tri-state area. But at FTA, we are very hopeful that um, the chosen representatives of the governors will continue to work towards an agreement, uh, which is so important to making these funds available to support the region's transit needs. So, as the transit industry looks forward to the additional infrastructure funding, many transit agencies are ramping up services close to pre-pandemic levels and preparing for the return of commuters by reviewing and updating their bus routes, uh, schedules on their rail to address the new ridership patterns, also purchasing new rolling stock, and also to continue to clean and improve passenger facilities. So as transit agencies here in the region prepare for more riders, they might also take the opportunity to upgrade passenger facilities, such as erecting new bus shelters or making accessibility improvements. For example, over the last year, the New York Metropolitan Transportation Authority has made elevator improvements at 11 stations to bring them into compliance with the ADA and has also committed $1.3 billion more for 18 additional station upgrades. This is certainly a great way to welcome back riders. We appreciate uh, NIMTIC's approach to planning in a region that has its share of complex transportation challenges, including traffic congestion and air quality concerns, as well as the coordinated regional transportation plan uh, with the transit network as a linchpin, which is really gonna help address those very issues. So each day, as your region of 2.9 million people who take the bus and almost 7 million who ride the rails and more than 110,000 who board the ferry, uh, we recognize that this is truly a transit powerhouse house. And NIMTIC works to uh, the levers to ensure that these systems continue to serve the residents and those yet to come. 
So the success of transportation system is really critical to the economic health and sustainable future growth of the region. And your work is vital to ensuring New York transit systems truly address the needs of everyone from the Metro North train commuter in Terrytown to the ferry rider in Staten Island to the Long Island Railroad commuter rail rider in Dominiola. In fact, your responsibilities continue to grow. And as the role of MPOs is expanding in response to our changing world, we look to you as our regional partners to build thriving communities by attracting good jobs and ensuring efficient and accessible public transportation. And of course, and beyond that, we expect MPOs to help tackle climate change and prioritize equity so that no one is left behind. It is a new era. New technologies are transforming transportation. And we have an opportunity, one that we've never had before, to improve safety, accessibility, and equity, to drive economic development and combat climate change. Of course, the impacts of climate change can be seen everywhere. Uh, Commissioner Dominguez reminding us of the devastating loss of life and the paralyzing damage from Ida uh, to the transportation network within the Nymphic region, which made headlines. And we all saw the pictures of the gushing geysers in the subway and highways turned to rivers and floating buses. So while resiliency and sustainability have been goals for many leaders in this region since Superstorm Sandy nine years ago, there is now an urgency to expedite and expand these efforts. Severe weather events now impact communities with re re record frequency. Uh, and FDA is committed to leading on efforts to combat climate change by ensuring that our communities have the fiscal and technical resources they seek to convert to greener transit fleets, protect transit infrastructure and the workforce, and to reduce the disproportionate impacts on certain communities. For a region expecting to grow to 14.3 million people over the next two decades, partnership and technology will play a big part of our comprehensive approach to meet these needs. Uh, it is taking a regional approach that we can consider not only where to place and replace roads and transit lines, but also how to address climate impacts of transportation. And this is particularly important as new jobs come to the region and people need to get to those jobs without getting stuck in crushing traffic. All of those idling cars, of course, contribute to greenhouse emissions. So I wanna commend NIMTIC's efforts to meet clean air goals at the region level, uh, because it will require regional commitment such as yours, as a, well as a significant steps by all governments to address the climate crisis. Public transportation will play a big part of, uh, of that solution. And I'm so pleased the pending infrastructure legislation includes funding that's gonna be dedicated to zero emission vehicles. And I understand that transit agencies throughout New York already have undertaken efforts to begin converting their fleets. Uh, was really uh, impressed by the actions in Suffolk County uh, and in accordance with the recent legislation that was passed by the state. Uh, the Westchester County Department of Transportation has begun purchasing electric buses as well under its Westchester 2025 vision plan. So as you all continue to switch from fossil fuels to electric or hydrogen based, we will reduce the greenhouse gas emissions uh, that play such a big role in our planet's rising temperatures. Uh, this past June, FDA launched the Sustainable Transit for Healthy Planet Challenge. So this initiative encourages transit agencies to develop climate action plans and to make strategic investments to support President Biden's goal of achieving a 50% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions by 2030. And we encourage all transit agencies, regardless of size, to develop sustainability plans that detail the GHG reduction strategies, such as converting fleets to electric buses and making facilities more energy efficient. And finally, FTA is proud to be a partner supporting critical transit projects in the region, such as the region's biggest project, which is the Hudson Tunnel expansion, and related gateway program projects, the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey's plans for a new bus terminal in Midtown, which would vastly improve a terminal that sees about 260,000 passengers a day, making it the busiest bus facility in the world, and both Nassau and Suffolk County's plans for a new bus rapid transit service, and many more projects too numerous to name. So building transportation hubs and introducing BRT or bus rapid transit are excellent strategies to improve access to transportation and to promote equity for residents in the New York metropolitan region. 
As we all know, public transportation is the greatest equalizer. It allows everyone to get the jobs, schools, services, and social activities, regardless of whether they own a car or cannot drive. And it is also critical for disadvantaged communities. Transit provides access to jobs, education, services, and opportunities, lifting up people, and under the best circumstances, lifting up entire communities. So achieving equity in our transportation systems will help all of us meet the challenges that the president has laid out before us. So I also want to remind everyone that we provide federal support for much of this. Many of our programs at USDOT are turning the administration's commitment to equity into practice. Uh, for example, our capital investment grant program, which provides competitive grants for capital projects, the department's rebuilding America's infrastructure with sustainability and equity, also known as uh, RISE program, provides funding for regional capital and planning projects as well. In fact, uh, up to 30 million of the fiscal year 21 uh, raised funding will be awarded to planning grants, including at least 10 million to areas of persistent poverty. So MPOs are among the eligible applicants, and I wanted to uh, point that out. So an extensive transit network creates better connections to opportunities, as all of you know, and uh, it's truly an opportunity for all of us uh, in this New York metropolitan region. So we want to make sure that regardless of how you travel, everyone has an equal opportunity to getting there. And I am delighted to have had this opportunity to talk to you for a few minutes. Uh, and uh, thank you very much. And I welcome your questions. Well, thank you so much, Administrator Fernandez. Uh, on behalf of the entire council, we very much appreciate uh, your time this morning and, um, and your very significant remarks. Um, I, I we've, we've kind of called our questions here and if it's okay, I'll serve as a moderator and ask you a few uh, just based on some of the uh, key points that you laid out. Um, you know, given where we're at with the pandemic um, and uh, continuing our, uh, you know, our safety regimes to make sure that uh, folks stay safe. Um, certainly we've seen the transit services in our region as well as across the country have really seen uh, unprecedented challenges, and you alluded to that in your remarks. Uh, as you know, riders remain significantly uh, below normal levels that we which we had in prior years. Uh, finances are are tough, um, and there have been certainly critical shortages in the workforce. Uh, we've seen that across all modes of transportation, but certainly in transit. Um, and the emergency federal funding has been absolutely critical to maintaining levels of service across the board. Um, and we are very, very appreciative of that. Um, but just to, to, to build off of your comments, um, those emergency levels of funding have been critical, but moving forward, how do you see transit evolving over the next several years, given the significant level of investment that hopefully is coming from Congress uh, and the administration? Um, can you, you, you alluded to it in a number of ways, but maybe you could expand on that a little bit. Yes, of course, it's my pleasure. And thanks for your question, uh, Commissioner. So before I start, I, let me just say how greatly appreciative uh, I am for the steadfast commitment of all transit agencies across the country uh, this past year and a half. It has been really remarkable uh, given the circumstances. And certainly this includes the transit providers in New York City region. So back when the states uh, first uh, imposed stay at home orders, transit workers continued to show up, as we heard earlier today. When the country came to a standstill, transit was moving. And when President Biden called for us to speed up vaccine distribution, transit agencies stepped up. The workers stepped up to help get people to get uh, become vaccinated and also vaccinating themselves. So transit systems um, will continue to move millions of people every day, and we can't thank them enough uh, for their dedication uh, during these challenging times. So we're seeing transit renewal happening across the country. Of course, every region is going to be different. But uh, throughout July and August, uh, we held a series of listening sessions and a national summit uh, with transit leaders, la uh, labor union leaders, and the National Public uh, Transportation Associations on this very topic. And we learned so much about the actions that transit agencies are taking to increase ridership. Uh, first and foremost, uh, these changes are focusing on really looking at how, 
who are our writers? And I think this is very important. As in any business, the more we understand our customers, the better we can serve them. And here's what we're seeing. We're seeing that major marketing campaigns to build customer confidence is really driving the message home. People are working differently. Uh, not, not everyone has a job that can be done from home. So there is going to be co a continued need for transit. Uh, there are some steps that are being taken um, about uh, fair free initiatives. Others about opening up more on demand options for new destinations. Uh, customers are saying we want transit to meet us where we are. We no longer want to be subjected to, to rigid schedules and locations. Um, there's also discussions around planning more activities to understand new customer travel patterns and many more. Not just doing what we did before, but building back better. So we expect that the industry is going to continue to uh, to have increased funding for operations and infrastructure investments that will help support uh, their efforts to reinvent themselves, uh, expand services, and probably more microtransit and on-demand routes uh, mixed in with greater investments in heavy rail uh, in large densely populated urban corridors. The emphasis on first mile last mile is very important. So that needs to be uh, considered. So I see a future of a connected, a network with clean energy world for transit with more fare free services, Wi-Fi and buses, more rural services and a greater diversity of ride options. And in addition, uh, transit will become a major part of our national climate change. Uh, everyone is looking to us as you all know, transportation is about 27% of the greenhouse gases that affect uh, this nation and the, uh, and the world. And when we think about what transit can do to uh, start to stem that uh, climate change, uh, we have a, a very important role on the sustainability and the strategy. And our fleet can come into play uh, as we move to a zero emission, low emission. So we still have some parts of our country where transit resources do not exist. But where critical investments is, are needed, uh, so. Uh, as a region, looking at the future and adjusting long range plans, given the realities of today is something of an imperative. I see the future as being very bright, uh, though it is going to take a lot of work on the part of all of us to get us there and FTA will be continue to be a good partner as you all think through um, your plans uh, for that future. Thank you very much. I, I, uh... I, I very much appreciate your vision um, and I couldn't agree more. I think that given where we're going in terms, as you know, uh, New York has a very aggressive climate uh, leadership and community protection act that we're executing mm -hmm. um, across the board to really significantly reduce greenhouse gas emissions and transit is a critical part of that for all of the reasons that you just detailed. Um, and uh, when we look at all these extreme weather events, how we actually incorporate them and how we actually build back better electrification of fleets, making sure that we are actually meeting uh, transit customers where they need to, where they want to go and how they need to get there. Um, looking at their needs in different ways, I think is absolutely um, uh, you know, critical to all of this. So I really very much, we all very much appreciate your insights on this. I think just kind of tying this back to what the NIMTIC meeting is uh, focused on today with regard to our regional transportation plan. Um, you know, as we look at our first and last mile access, uh, certainly our, my co-chair Steve Ballone, uh referenced this micro mobility, you did as well. Um, but that also gets to some of the equi equity um, elements that that we're looking at in terms of regional regional mobility. Um, is there anything between between equity and also uh, uh, technology that you uh, you know Department of Transportation is all, always involved in in new and different ways of looking at how we can actually leverage technology uh, for the future of public transportation? Is there anything else that you might be able to? share with us in terms of uh, the way service is used and how it's provided and some of the things that you're thinking about on the federal level. Uh, yes. <laughs> I think there, there are several things uh, that are front and center. As we all know, public transportation really helps shape uh, communities. So if done right, transit uh, 
equates that opportunity, but only if everyone has access to it. So as we think about the strategies um, like enhanced first and last mile connectivity through shuttles, micro mobility assets, and having safer streets uh, and complete streets, I think that starts to, to create that framework that's going to help us move forward because we can't have uh, emphasis on first mile, last mile, even have conversations about improving our bus network if we don't have safe ways of getting people to bus stops, if we are not inclusive of all individuals uh, based on their ability to reach those um, access, whether it's the rail or the buses. Um, one of the, um, the examples of connecting riders to new services that uh, is happening right in here in, uh, in, in New York with your strategic investments, uh, in the region's uh, ferry system, which I don't want to negate in this conversation. I mean, several weeks ago, uh, the first of three brand new um, OLIS uh, class uh, ferries arrived in New York City to join the Staten Island Ferry Fleet. Uh, we supported that construction of the vessels with $168 million in federal funding, along with additional investments in Staten Island's ferries, barges, landings, and terminals. And why is this important? Because we think about the whole region to a connected network of public transportation. So it's not just one particular mode of the public transportation, but all of these systems coming together. I think that the vision, I truly believe that the vision of uh, taking full advantage of the funding available uh, through public transit programs, uh, through research, through technology. We have a series of NOFOs that we have been releasing over the years uh, that provide additional funding opportunities for planning and developing technology solutions that better serve uh, the individual communities and the region as a whole. So I, I celebrate what you all are doing through your regional plan. I think it's important in that regional transportation plan, again, with the emphasis on, we have seen so much. We have gone through a pandemic that has shifted the way that people wanna travel. And then there are, it's also highlighted um, the significance of resiliency and flexibility. And then recently, again, reminded through uh, the Hurricane Ida, uh, the vulnerability of our infrastructure and why it's important also to think about that infrastructure because when it was not available as excellent job by uh, New York MTA and all of the other systems in making sure that they were up and ready and available to commuters the next day. But the reality is that the infrastructure still uh, suffered significantly. And in fact, okay, what, what do we need to do? And can we take advantage of the uh, great opportunity available through uh, technology and research and programs and funding that starts to put pay more attention uh, to um, the hardening and resiliency of this investment that we're all making together. Thank you so very much, Administrator Fernandez. It's such a pleasure uh, to have you uh, join us today and uh, for you to share all of your many insights on this. I know. Um, you speak not only from experience, um, but uh, but from a, a leadership position in, in this industry, and uh, we very much appreciate it. So thank you. And thank you for the invitation and have a great meeting. Be safe. Thank you very much. All right, with that, I will um, I greatly appreciate uh, Administrator Fernandez. Uh, I'd like to turn uh, the meeting over to my co-chair, uh, County Executive Ballone, um, and uh, engage in further conversation here. Thank you very much, Commissioner, and I, I want to thank uh, Administrator, Administrator Fernandez as, as well for her, her remarks, her leadership, uh, and uh, thanks to uh, Secretary Buttigieg and, and President Biden as well, uh, particularly for their efforts uh, around infrastructure, how critical those are um, to our region. So uh, a great thanks uh, to the administrator. And I think uh, having heard uh, from her now, um, it's a good time to engage uh, with our colleagues uh, and talk a little bit about uh, some of the issues uh, here and particularly what you started off with uh, talking about uh, commissioner and that is 
the extreme weather events, um, you know, the intense rainfall from Tropical Storm Ida last week that flooded streets, disrupted transportation, really underscored the impacts of, of these extreme weather events, which are more intense, more frequent due to climate change. And transportation resiliency, one of the uh, vision goals in our new plan is, is critical. So how do we best work together to address the very challenges of making our transportation system more resilient? So I want to open it up to uh, the council members uh, on this question. And uh, I can say from uh, you know our perspective, looking over the last couple of weeks, we went uh, from uh, having in Suffolk County uh, preparations for a, a hurricane that um, was coming up uh, the East Coast that uh, was a tropical storm that was expected now to uh, become a Category 1 hurricane. And uh, because it shifted direction to hit us directly, which would have been the first direct hurricane strike uh, in Suffolk County uh, since uh, Gloria back in 1985. Fortunately, that moved uh, a little bit east. But then just a week or so later, here we have a hurricane that made landfall 1500 miles away that caused such devastation in our region. Um, and you think about those, those events and the frequency, which we're, which they are happening. Uh, something is, is very different here that uh, we have to grapple with. So I'm, I want to open that up to uh, the council members for any, any comments um, uh, and uh, discussion on that point. Uh, this is Hank Gutman, uh, New York City DOT Commissioner. Uh, uh, look, I, I, I second uh, uh, the comments of our chairs and, and applaud the comments of our keynote speaker, uh, all music to our ears, but I think it's quite clear by now that climate change is not some prediction of future events. It's a present emergency. And all the things we've been talking about doing or thinking about doing or planning to do or having small pilots on because we think we will do them at some point in the future now need to be priorities. And uh, uh, as, as the county executive pointed out, we were all prepared for traditional hurricane. And we were worried about storm surge and we were worried about uh, uh, low-lying coastal areas, uh, uh, and I think everybody was taken by surprise by the ferocity of the rainfall and the impact that could have on lots of areas that weren't anywhere near the water. They just had bad drainage. And, uh, you know, so we, I think we have to view this as an emergency. I think we have to allocate our resources as if it's an emergency. Uh, in New York City, we're, we're, we're doing that. Uh, I had the, the pleasure yesterday of, of being at the, uh, the inauguration of our first high-speed DC chargers in a city parking garage. And we released our Electrify New York plan, uh, which has very aggressive goals for 2025 and 2023, and, and 2030 rather, in terms of making charging freely available and readily available throughout the city, not just for Tesla owners who can afford high-priced garages on the Upper East Side or or in Brownstone, Brooklyn, but for uh, for everybody in the city, because you know while we are spending considerable resources and attention at moving people away from reliance on private cars, we also need to make sure that the cars that do continue to be used are electric. So. Uh, I just think, I, I think the takeaway from all of this is that we all need to have a sense of urgency about this. Uh, you know, congestion pricing obviously is another high priority for all of us, both in terms of uh, the impact on carbon emissions and in terms of providing much needed funding for our mass transit system, which is after all the alternative uh, to polluting private cars, et cetera. So, uh, 
I would just join the chorus in saying that all of us have to view this as as an emergency, not just a someday issue, because um, it's getting late. This is Mike Schiffer with MTA. I, I just want to second uh, Commissioner Gutman. I think, you know, as as we work with our partners, we need to recognize that not all flooding is the same. Rainwater versus coastal flooding requires very different solutions at different locations. And while a lot of the past projects, including those that NIMTIC has supported, have addressed locations that were inundated by traditional hurricanes and storms such as Sandy, uh, we need to recognize that flooding of the type that we saw from Ida is more distributed and much less locally predictable. So it presents a real challenge. And one way to start addressing that challenge uh, that we've done, uh, for example, is is uh, coordinating with our colleagues at, at New York City as an example, and we've coordinated with many other colleagues in the various counties uh, to share data. Uh, so we have a flash flooding task force, for example, that includes ongoing data exchange uh, where we get information about proactive cleaning of certain catch basins, et cetera. And at the same time, we share information that we know about systems of our network that have uh, been known to be uh, specific problematic hotspots. And, and so I think it's very important to continue that exchange and that engagement with all of our partners. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Gutman as well. Do we have any other thoughts or um, points on this question? Hi, this is Rick Marquis from Federal Highway. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. And, and I apologize for not being on by WebEx. For some reason, I couldn't uh, connect that way, but I'm here by phone. Um, just, just a couple of thoughts, and, and, I, and I do appreciate uh, Commissioner Gutman's comments. Um, just as, as Federal Highway works with uh, New York, you know, NYSDOT, New York City DOT, the MTA, and others, um, you know, when we're advancing projects, um, I think it would be good if we, as part of the purpose and need of projects, made sure that we uh, considered as part of the purpose and need for the project uh, resiliency. And I think we we have started to do that, and uh, we should really continue to do that and make that a priority. Another thing that I've had some discussions with uh, uh, Commissioner Dominguez and Commissioner Gutman is about in the area of specifications and standards uh, on on our projects, and um, I think we should work or continue to work to make sure that we're considering um, the effects of climate change when uh, you know we set our specifications and standards. So those are just a couple of quick thoughts, uh, but I did want to recognize this important topic. Thank you very much, and uh, we appreciate you joining us, uh, whether by phone or or, or video. Um, anyone else uh, on this subject? Uh, yes. Yeah, so, hello, this is Jared Snyder from New York DEC. I just wanted to to emphasize um, that Governor Hochul signed legislation yesterday that will move the state, um, you know, very expeditiously towards electrifying transportation. The legislation establishes requirements or directs DEC to establish uh, regulations requiring 100 percent sales of electric light duty vehicles by 2035 and 100 percent sales of medium and heavy duty vehicles by 2045. And as a first step in that process, DEC issued proposed regulations yesterday that um, establish requirements for sales of heavy duty and medium duty electric vehicles or zero emission vehicles um, from 2035 to, or 2025 to 2035 um, to, to really start or, or, or continue movement in the direction of electrifying our transportation system. It's very much a partnership between all the, you know, uh, different le levels of government that are involved in today's meeting to, to meet this goal. Thank you. Can, That's great. Thank you, Jared, for sharing that information. Can Can I just say, I, I saw that news while we were on this call, and could you please share our congratulations to the governor? I think this is an incredibly important step forward. Uh, we're thrilled that the state of New York 
uh, has done this. And uh, on behalf of the city, I can say that with the help of our federal partners, we're committed to electrification. Uh, we look forward to making sure that all those electric vehicles have good places to charge when they come to New York City. Good. Great. Thank you. That's great. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, so I'll just add, you know, a couple of the, we face a couple of challenges here, really, obviously the lack of investment we've seen over decades uh, on a national level, the underinvestment in infrastructure, uh, an aging infrastructure um, that uh, that needs that investment. That's one issue, but of course, because of the impacts of climate change, we are uh, seeing that these systems simply have not been designed. Um, it's not just the, the infrastructure is, is uh, aging, it's, it's literally just not designed to handle um, the kind of extreme weather events we're facing. So uh, really is a broad based uh, challenge uh, that we face that uh, requires all of us to be working together at the um, local state and national level. Commissioner, do we have time for another question or do we want to uh, turn it back over to you? Um, I, I believe we have time for one more question. All right. So, obviously, we heard from Administrator uh, Fernandez about the new federal investments um, and the importance of that. Uh, so, we, we're going to be seeing an infusion um, of those dollars and, and that will go into our planning process. Um, considering the importance of this enhanced federal investment for our region, what are the uh, members' thoughts on how we can best use uh, that to advance our shared vision for greater mobility uh, in the region. Yes, sir, Stephen Powers from Rockland County. Um, Rockland County Executive Edward J. Day looks forward to working with the FTA and the NIMTEC membership to prioritize FTA's capital investment program to set aside funds from the infrastructure bill for the Gateway Project. This is a project of tremendous importance, not only for Rockland County, but for the entire region in terms of both regional mobility and economic health. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Any other uh, thoughts on the um, administrator's remarks, the, the infusion of uh, federal infrastructure investments and how that will uh, impact and how we should be thinking about um, that impacting our vision for critical mobility in the region. I, I'll just, I'll just add to say that um, I think the timing of our regional transportation plan is critical uh, with moving forward being published, you know, uh, with this meeting. Um, but I think that uh, it really is that level of regional coordination that is so critical. Uh, as we look at our as we look at our uh, opportunities, hopefully moving forward as Congress passes this critical infrastructure act. Um, the level of planning we've talked about the climate needs the level of resiliency that needs to be built back into the system. Uh, the opportunity to invest in not just electrification, but all the technologies that are coming online that will truly reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, Rick talked about the um, uh, about the the standards, literally, and going back to the basics of how do we actually build into our uh, our planning and our design mechanisms um, those levels of uh, resiliency factors and standards that we need to have. Um, I know certainly at New York State DOT we've been doing that for a number of years, and we're going to further enhance all of that. Uh, but also looking at some basic nuts and bolts uh, on regional planning with regard to making sure that we take advantage of uh, some of the um, the infrastructure dollars to look at some some critical things like culvert repair and making sure that roadways um, are are able to handle extreme weather events, but also building in that level of resiliency um, to make sure that we've got that regional connectivity at all points in time, whether that's in transit in our roads, our bridges, et cetera, um, and, uh, and all of the investments that we're looking to make. But I think, I think it couldn't be more, um, the timing couldn't be more uh, important in terms of our publication of, of moving forward and, and the larger vision for, for the New York uh, region. Um, this is Naomi Klein from Westchester also. And I just want to um, 
say that County Executive George Latimer apologizes that he could, couldn't be with us. Um, interestingly, he's dealing with some of the flooding issues uh, today in, in the Maranac, but uh, just to echo what people have been saying, we're really in a transformative time when it comes to uh, transportation. Uh, just when we thought we were starting to dig out from uh, all the effects of the uh, the pandemic here, we were hit with yet another catastrophic uh, event with uh, with Ida. Uh, so, so that's a, a real challenge. And then just addressing the issue that was brought up about how do we, um, you know, as as our, as an MPO, um, deal with our shared vision and um, addressing some of these issues. And I think as we when we come together as an MTIC. And speak with one voice. Uh, we really are are stronger in advocating um, for the resources that we really need uh, to address these situations. And when we also share best practices, which was was brought up and co collaborate, um, we're we're also more effective. Thank you, Naomi. Naomi, appreciate that, and thank you to the county executive as well. Any other comments from any other uh, of the members? Yeah, Mike, Mike Schiffer for MTA uh, again. I, I think, you know, the, the other point, just to couple onto that, uh, the infrastructure bill really presents a tremendous opportunity for the region. Uh, mm -hmm. a, and a direct appropriation for a state of good repair will be extremely helpful in addressing the regional need, uh, particularly after capital programs such as MTAs uh, were put on hold uh, in light of COVID uh, revenue losses. And we really, moving forward, need to leverage data uh, that we have to understand the condition of our existing assets, and we need to evaluate our proposed enhancements uh, based on measurable criteria, such as obviously resiliency, equity, cost, and and of course ridership. So we're we're looking forward to working with everybody as we move forward. That's great, Michael. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other comments or thoughts on this? <laughs> Yeah, hi, this is Steve Goodman. Just, just a comment. Um, you know, you, you mentioned first of all, I, I agree with the, the comments you made in this area uh, as far as resilience and protecting the infrastructure and, and dealing with climate change. But one of the things I just want to highlight is that with all this extra federal money that might be coming this way, is you know just consider the secretary's priorities that address a lot of these things that we're talking about. So they, they really align well with the priorities of this administration. So I think, uh, you know, if you follow that playbook with, with the, the administration as the funding is coming, you'll be able to address a lot of these issues that we're talking about. And of course, we here at FDA will be here to provide any technical assistance as we move forward. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate that. Any other thoughts? All right, well, uh, before I turn over to the commission, I'm just going to add uh, in, I, I, I couldn't agree more with her comments and, and some of the other members here about uh, this uh, regional cooperation and coordination and how critical that really has always been. But moving forward, when we're going to be making these significant investments, uh, how important that is. Um, you know, as we move forward here, uh, we have to move together as a region if we're going to tackle these great challenges that we face. And in terms of mobility that this question relates to, we're thinking about, of course, the mobility around uh, our region, uh, but we need to be thinking uh, beyond about connections uh, to other regions throughout the Northeast uh, and uh, along the Atlantic and, and certainly I know uh, one of the subjects that has come up uh, that I have been a uh, big advocate for, which is speed rail. And I know many others have been here. Um, that That is the ultimate way we're going to uh, make a, a big dent into climate change issues around transportation, uh, mobility issues, connecting uh, people in underserved communities who have been uh, isolated in many ways. We have communities uh, like Wine Ranch and Suffolk County uh, have been economically isolated, isolated that can be connected to uh, a great uh, innovation network uh, connected by high speed rail. So uh, it's very important as we uh, think about how we invest these resources uh, in uh, state of good repair that we're also thinking about um, how we're building back for the future uh, 
uh, and creating greater economic opportunity for all of us uh, and uh, for those who are coming after us as well. Commissioner, I will turn it back over to you now. Okay, thank you very much, uh, County Executive Malone. All right, uh, now let's move to the public participation portion of our agenda. Uh, we've set aside a few minutes here on the agenda to hear from participants who've registered to speak. Um, we would like to hear from you, uh, and we will hear from you rather in the order that you registered. Um, and uh, let's see, we would ask that you limit your comments to relevant transportation and planning related items. Uh, also, if you could keep it to three minutes, we would greatly appreciate it so that we can hear from as many folks as possible. And I will turn it over to uh, Andrea. Do we have uh, some folks registered? Yes, we do. Um, the first registered speaker is Mary Bowden. Please unmute, Mary. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. I'm Murray Bowden. Most of you know who I am. I'm 88 years old. I got one foot in the grave. Won't be around here much longer. So I get to say pretty much what's on my mind. A lot of people are saying, well, I've been in business for four generations and I'm going to lose my business. Well, the Bowden family has been in the fabric maintenance business for 95 years. My son is the fourth generation and pretty soon he'll close his well, it's now known as dry cleaning. He'll close his plant. The world changed. There is one overriding issue and it's global warming. And it's upon us and it's an emergency. All else you're planning for five and 10 and 30 years isn't gonna work if you don't do the changes that are needed now. Little things like we can't stop blowing the train horns at railroad stations because 200 years ago they blew the train horn when there were no railroad stations. We can't stop using red flashing lights at railroad crossings, traffic lights work everywhere else and we can't change that. On the highways, we cut the grass as Robert Moses did on his parkways, which were ribbon parks. Today, you don't want to see the traffic going on a divided highway because you get rubbernecking accidents. You can't stop that. On a divided highway, we can't stop the police cars and emergency people from having their lights flashing and distracting people going in the other direction. We need to think about global warming as an emergency basis. And it's here now. And when you think about, oh, in 20, 10 years from now, we'll do something. No, it's over. If you read the information from China, they're doing it now. These decisions are difficult. And some of you who have been uh, experts for the last 10, 20, 30 years aren't experts anymore. It's hard to admit that the world changed and the world belongs to my grandchildren's generation and not to my generation. How do we solve it? Admit the truth. This is a global emergency. We're not in it alone unless every country cuts back. What is going to be difficult to realize is that the word growth has no meaning anymore. No economy will grow, can't, the world can't support it. So there'll be a reduction in everything and a reevaluating of how you use your time. Transit oriented, oriented housing, it's in Chappaqua, it's in New Rochelle, not in Greenberg. We don't know how to do it. We have experts that don't know they're not experts anymore. The manual uniform traffic control devices was written 50 years ago. It's outdated. They haven't the vaguest idea how to change it. We have to build bridges like cable stayed bridges like they did after World War II when resources were limited and that was the cheapest and fastest way to do it. Long Island Railroad builds the bridges on the ground, picks them up, put them in place on a, with a couple of cranes. Why can't we do that all over? Building a bridge that's over the road where it's much more difficult than building it on the ground. Concrete's a dirty word. We don't make concrete sidewalks anymore except in certain business areas. Curbs, why do we have curbs? 
hundreds and thousands of miles of roads, no curbs. And yet we're putting curbs in the rebuilding of the highways. The sawmill parkway flooded, people were caught. You can't drain it. It's gonna, next time when you have a big storm, first thing you do is shut down New York City. Nobody moves until it's over. Hey, I'm the, I'm the, I'll be dead pretty soon. I've worked with some really great people, many of you who are on this call right now. I couldn't have done it without your help. And I need to acknowledge all those people who taught me. I didn't do this alone. I got backup. They keep correcting me and they get my emails. And if I make a mistake, they call me on it. Right now, <sighs> difficult to tell you that some of you should retire. You know, the younger generation, my grandchildren, the 20s and 30s, need to run the country. They know how to do it. Give them a chance. I thank all of those people at Dimtic and other places who have helped me and taught me. I couldn't have done this without lessons from other people. So this may be the last time I get to talk to you. I hope not, but one never knows. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Bowden. Andrea? Yes, um, the next public speaker um, that's registered is Will Flowers from Winter Brothers Waste Systems. Hi, Commissioner Dominguez and County Executive Ballone. Thanks so much for having me today. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Will Flower and I am with Winters Brothers uh, Waste Systems here on Long Island. We own the Brookhaven Rail, which is a class three short line railroad that operates in Yatpank. Uh, the work of NIMTEC is more critical today than ever before. Uh, and we appreciate the hard work, the investment in strategic planning to provide a transportation infrastructure for the region. We wanna especially recognize the work of Jerry Bogatz, Jerry's expertise and willingness to promote NIMTEC's work and vision in the region is highly valued. Uh, to no one's surprise, there is a need for a significant increase in transportation capacity to manage freight deliveries. Uh, that is deliveries to and shipments from Long Island. We remind NIMTEC and all the transportation agencies of the very real increase in truck traffic that will occur when the Brookhaven landfill closes in 2024. Specifically, when the landfill shuts its gates in 2024, more than 1.2 million tons of material will be displaced. The majority of this waste will need to be shipped off of Long Island to environmentally uh, safe disposal locations located in Pennsylvania, Virginia, Ohio, and other distant locations. While waste reduction, reuse, and recycling are important strategies, and, and, and certainly strategies that Winters Brothers is advancing, we calculate the need for some 60,000 to 100,000 additional trucks each year to handle the 1.2 million tons of waste that will be displaced once the landfill closes. The cost-effective and environmentally sound movement of waste is already at critical capacity due to the stressed roadway infrastructure leading off of Long Island. Fortunately, we are working on a solution that incorporates the rail movement of freight on and off of Long Island. Specifically, we are developing a 228-acre rail terminal that will serve Long Island for the next 50 years, probably longer. We believe that rail is a viable and environmentally friendly method of moving waste off of Long Island and also moving freight onto Long Island. As you know, transportation infrastructure takes time to develop, and we would welcome the opportunity to further discuss the need and the benefits of a rail solution for Long Island, along with the consistencies between our project and NIMTEC's transportation plan at a future NIMTEC meeting. The bottom line is that our project will result in fewer truck trips off of Long Island, 
thereby reducing congestion, congestion and improving air quality uh, while addressing climate change issues. Uh, thank you for the time this morning. And uh, again, we appreciate NIMTEC's work to promote the efficient, cost effective, and environmentally sound solutions relating to transportation across the region. Thank you. The next speaker, Joseph Clift. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Good afternoon. I'm a past. Uh, my name is Joseph Clift. I'm a past director of planning for the Long Island Railroad and an advocate for improved trans Hudson rail based mobility since 2003. I listened to your comments today, your calls for increased investment and in resiliency against extreme weather events, electrification of transportation and improved transit. And my simple observation is those needs fly in the face of wasteful spending already in your transportation plan. And I wanna to speak specifically to phase one of Gateway and address my comments today to Administrator Fernandez. Um, phase one consists of the Portal North Bridge project, $1.8 billion. Most of that's not needed. And the $12.3 billion Hudson Tunnel project, most of that not needed. This $14 billion public investment has zero, I repeat, zero impact on trans Hudson rail based mobility. Not a single additional rider, not a single additional car, not a single additional train. I have three asks of the administrator today. The first, please look carefully at New Jersey Transit's final 2020 application for a $767 million core capacity grant for the Portal North Bridge project. New Jersey Transit claimed non bridge related capacity improvements as bridge related to illegally qualify for this grant. And the FDA allowed those applications to go in that way. You can save all but $200 million of this $1.8 billion by simply having Amtrak build a low level movable bridge replacing the existing portal bridge. There is no commercial traffic going through the bridge anymore. My second request, my second ask is to look carefully at the Port Authority's updated application to the FTA for a $5.6 billion new starts grant for the Hudson Tunnel Project submitted last month. There is only $69 million, one half of 1% committed by the project sponsors. That's New York, New Jersey, and the Port Authority uh, for this project. All the rest of this money is to be borrowed or granted by the feds. There's no way this project can move into project engineering. The project does also does not list any money for cost overruns, they admit price tag is $1.8 billion. They don't have a single dollar um, listed for where that money will come from. Until the locals get a grip on the financial aspects of this, the project should not move into project engineering. And finally, my last ask is for the administrator working with the FRA to follow up on past DOC Secretary Elaine Chow's commitment to looking at starting the rehab of the existing Hudson Tunnel tubes, the two tubes that have problems today, using what's called repair in place, examined by London Bridge Associates in a report to the Gateway Development Commission. It's doable, it's done around the world. If you start that now, you save 10 years on those improvements. And I ask that the administrator take a hard look at that. I also ask for the MTA to push, to push, uh, Trent, to push DOT, to look at that in the East River tunnels. Thank you very much. Appreciate the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Um, we did have a speaker, George Hykalis from our um, IRUM. He was scheduled to um, speak, but he had computer connection issues, but he has provided his remarks and his remarks will be submitted in our meeting synopsis. Um, Back to you, Commissioner. Thank you so much, Andrea. Um, all right, uh, we have some uh, we have some uh, work here that we need to do as the council. Um, so I'm going to ask. We're going to move to item E on our um, agenda, which is looking at some action items. 
Uh, first, we'll look at accepting the uh, February 25th, 2021 meeting synopsis. Um, all the material that's related to all of these action items is available uh, and posted at the NIMTIC website, which is www.nymtc.org. Uh, again, the first action item is to accept the February 25th, 2021 meeting synopsis minutes. Uh, and uh, as we move through the action items, I would request that all the voting members announce your name and the agency you represent when I uh, make your motion or second a motion. And uh, with Andrea's uh, assistance, um, can I uh, have a motion to accept the February 25th, uh, 2021 meeting synopsis uh, that was presented in your packages? So moved. Thank so moved. Thank you. Thank you. Chapman. Uh, do I have a second? Uh, do I have a second? Stephen Powers seconds it for Rock and County. Thank you, Mr. Powers. Thank you, Mr. Powers. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? And it's. Okay, we'll now have a vote by roll call starting with uh, Lower Hudson Valley. Putnam County? Aye. Aye. Rockland County? Putnam County? Uh, aye. aye. Westchester? Westchester? Aye. All right, moving to Long Island, I, I notice we have a. Okay, hoping the echo went away. All right, in Long Island, Nassau County? David Viana representing Nassau County Executive Laura Curran, aye. Suffolk County. Yes. New York City, New York City Department of Transportation. Uh, Hank Upman, yes. New York City uh, Department of City Planning. Jack Schmidt, aye. Finally, MTA. Stephanie Delisle, aye. All right, and on behalf of New York City, or excuse me, New York State Department of Transportation, I vote aye. All right, thank you all. The motion passes. All right. Now, <clears throat> let's look at uh, the next action item, which is to introduce the second, uh, let's see, the resolution 2021-5, um, council adoption of the federal fiscal years 2022 through 2050 regional transportation plan and the 2021 congestion management process. So to do that, I'm gonna turn it over to Jan Khan, NIMTIC's regional planning manager, who's going to uh, introduce the resolution. Thank you, Commissioner. Good afternoon, Commissioner and Council members. I have the distinct pleasure on behalf of your staff of introducing resolution 2021-5, in which we are asking you to adopt two of the Council's major planning project products. The new regional transportation plan, which has a horizon year of 2050, and which is entitled Moving Forward, and the 2021 Congestion Management Process Status Report. NIMTEC's existing uh, federal fiscal year 2018 to 2045 plan was adopted by the Council on June 27, 2017, and per federal regulation expires on September 30th, 2021. And so a new plan was developed and now and needs to be in place by October 1st of this year, 2021. In conjunction with the plan, uh, NIMTEC also prepared a draft 2021 congestion management process status report to meet the federal transportation requirements for this MPO. However, before I um, formally ask you to adopt resolution 2020, 1-5, I'd like to provide you with a brief summary of these two documents. As you'll see from this PowerPoint presentation, Moving Forward was developed over two years by NIMTEX members with input from regional stakeholders and, and, and the public. 
uh, much of our, we did a whole lot of uh, uh, public involvement, much of which uh, was done virtually. The plan is a federally required product that will enable and guide federal funding for transportation projects throughout NIMTEX planning area. And the final draft of this plan moving forward is ready for council adoption today. Next slide, please. The next slide, please. Commissioner, as you pointed out in your opening remarks, moving forward. Now, who's, can you put it to slide number two, please? Anyway, as um, pointed out in your uh, remarks earlier, Commissioner, moving forward is built around the members' um, shared vision for regional mobility which recognizes the critical importance of mobility to people's lives and aspires to ensure that mobility provi is provided through our transportation system and that it reaches everyone in a sustainable, healthy, and equitable manner. Uh, to invest efficiently for these transportation needs and th thirdly, to respond effectively to the transportation challenges of tomorrow. Um, moving forward, uh, is built around um, five oh, vision goals. These are safety and security, reliable and easy travel, planning for changing demand, reducing environmental impacts, and uh, fifthly, resiliency. Associated with these goals, of course, are many objectives which will allow us to achieve these goals and ultimately uh, the Council's visions. Um, the plan itself moving forward is built on some future forecasts, and these include socioeconomic and demographic characteristics, travel demand and commodity flows, and the transformational changes that will likely impact the transportation system. What moving forward applies the shared vision to this future scenario to recommend a range of strategies, actions, projects, and programs. And so now we are on the correct slide. Um, within the plan recommendations are these that you can see on the screen there, there are 17, 17 major system enhancements, uh, totaling roughly $50 billion. And there are over 125 transportation projects, programs, and studies for roads, bridges, public transit, goods movement, mobility, safety, and non-motorized transportation. There over 400 aspirational vision projects, uh, programs and studies for which funding has not yet been identified, but what which will move into the constraint plan when that has been done. There are investment recommendations for human services, transportation and specialized services. And there are strategies and actions for short term planning activities which are guided by the shared vision. May I have the next slide please? Jen, there's an issue with the connection, so we're not may not be able to do that. Okay. So just keep okay. going. Great. So we have this plan moving forward, but we have to pay for the plan. So moving forward also includes a plan to pay for the plan. The plan forecasts federal, state, and local funding that can be reasonably expected to accrue to the region over the planning period. And it also um, relates that funding to the forecasted costs for preserving and enhancement, enhancing or a fast and aging transportation network. Uh, the rough, um, within the plan, the, the cost of the plan actually is roughly about $800 billion and the revenue forecasted, these are capital, um, are uh, $805 billion. Of course, um, we also cover the cost of <clears throat> operation and maintenance of the huge transportation system that we have in the region. Um, and associated with the plan is the congestion management status report. We, the council publishes a congestion management status report with each new plan. The status report provides an overview of the congestion management process and, and its methodology. It presents the results of the most recent um, congestion management process analyses and forecasts, and it describes the strategies committed 
two in the plan to address the current and forecasted levels of congestion. Um, and in closing this PowerPoint presentation, I'd like to thank um, the members, the member agencies for their involvement in developing both the plan and the CMP status report. Now, Council members, both of these draft products meet all of the federal requirements and have undergone extensive public involvement and public review per federal regulations and per the NIMTEX operating procedures. At its August 19, 2021 meeting, NIMTEX Program Finance and Administrative Committee recommended that moving forward and the 2021 status report be adopted by the Council. So, here I am now asking you now through resolution 2021-5, we are asking you to adopt moving forward and the 2021 congestion management status report. Thank you very much. Jan, thank you so, uh, so much for eloquently uh, uh, capturing what is indeed uh, an enormous amount of work and detail. Uh, on this plan, and I just want to once again thank you and um, all the NIM NIMTIC staff who have uh, devoted your time and energies to uh, develop to developing this uh, this plan. So thank you all very much again. May I have a motion to adopt the uh, adopt the um, resolution 2021-5, the uh, federal fiscal or regional transportation plan? So moved, Naomi Klein, Westchester County. Thank you. Do I have a second? Hank, Hank Gutman, uh, New York City DOT. Thank you, Commissioner Gutman. Okay, is there any discussion? In the interest of time, uh, and if it's okay uh, with the Roberts Rules of Order here, um, can I dispense with a, uh, a roll call vote and simply go by exception. Is there anyone who does not concur with the acceptance of this resolution? All right, hearing no objections. Can I just get everybody, uh, can you unmute and just say affirmative aye if you agree? All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone opposed? All right, with that, the motion. All right, with that, the motion. Thank you all. Okay, our next action is to adopt resolution 2021 6, uh, a, uh, a recognition of service uh, by uh, a former colleague here and a current colleague, Patrick Foy. Uh, he is the former chair and CEO of the Metropolitan Transportation Authority uh, and has served as a principal member of NIMTIC uh, for, for a long time. And if I could, I'd like to read the resolution. Um, whereas Patrick Foy was the chair and CEO of MTA from 2019 through 2021. And whereas while, the, while with the agency, Mr. Foy served as a principal member of NIMTIC, Whereas during his tenure as a principal member, he served the council and contributed to the vision that helped shape the future of NIMTIC and certainly the region. And therefore, be it resolved that the New York Metropolitan Transportation Council acknowledges the outstanding service of Mr. Foy and his lifetime of contributions to enhancing the mobility and efficiency of New York's transportation systems and for his guidance and contributions as a principal member of the council. We want to thank Pat Foy and wish him the very best in his new responsibilities. May I have a motion to adopt this resolution? I'll make the motion on that, Commissioner. Thank you. Uh, okay, do I have a second? I think I saw uh, Commissioner Gutman second that. All right, again, I'll ask uh, in terms of time, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any, any objection? Any, any objection? Here, the motion passes and we want to thank Pat Foy very much for his service uh, to MCH the region. 
All right, at this point in time, I'm going to turn the meeting over to County Executive Below. And, uh, Thank you very much, Commissioner. Again, I, I want to join you in uh, thanking Pat Foy for all of his work and his great, great public service, which I know continues. Uh, truly, I appreciate it on behalf of all of us here in Suffolk County, uh, all of his uh, great work. So at this time, uh, Chris Hardy, NIMTIC's Regional Programming Manager, is going to provide an overview of NIMTIC's next uh, transportation improvement program. So I'll turn it over to uh, Chris. Thank you, County Executive Malone, and uh, good afternoon, County Council members. Now that the new plan is adopted, we are turning our attention to the next transportation improvement program, otherwise known as the TIP. The TIP is a federally required program of projects that identifies the transportation improvements selected for NIMTIC members for federal funding. Projects are required to be on the TIP in order to be eligible for federal funding. The current federal fiscal year 2020 20 to 2024 tip was adopted by the council in september 2019 with about 21 and a half billion worth of transportation improvements over a five-year period of which 11 and a half billion of that is programmed with federal funding nemtic staff has begun the process of preparing for the development of a new tip that will cover federal fiscal years 2023 to 2027 Starting this month, NIMTIC staff will begin work with the member agencies to identify projects to be included in the new TIP. This new TIP will have its basis in the newly adopted plan and will likely incorporate the new funding levels authorized by Congress. By our current schedule, NIMTIC will be conducting its public review process for the draft 2023 to 2027 TIP during the spring. The final draft tip should be available for council adoption in late August or early September 2022. After adoption, the NIMTIC tip will be adopted into a statewide tip and will become effective on October 1st, 2022. NIMTIC staff will be working closely with the council member staff over the coming months to develop this new tip. And that concludes my report on this informational item. Chris, thanks very much. Uh, appreciate that. Um, and I wanted to uh, let everybody know, unless Commissioner, there's any any comments on that. Um, Going to let the uh, members know about the next council meeting that we tentatively have scheduled for uh, February 24th uh, next year. Um, and at that time, the council will be meeting to adopt uh, NIMTIC's uh, new unified planning work program. Uh, so, of course, uh, details of that meeting will be made available uh, prior, approximately two weeks prior to uh, the meeting date. And uh, at this point, uh, I'll turn it back over to uh, the commissioner. All right. Thank you very much, County Executive Malone. Uh, I think that brings us to the conclusion of, our, of today's agenda. I want to thank everyone for their participation. Uh, I want to particularly, again, thank the NIMTIC staff and our secretary, Ron Epstein. Um, and with that, may I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Naomi Klein, Westchester. Thank you. Any objections to the motion? All right, hearing none, uh, this meeting stands in adjournment. Thank you all very much. And I hope everyone stays very safe. Uh, and stay well. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Well done.